Hello, everyone. Welcome to a special Zoom meeting here at TechSoup. Our subject today is nonprofit wellness and team self care. And boy, do I need this today. I don't know about you, but I need this today. So I'm so excited that you're here. Um, we're doing something different. If this is your first time here at TechSoup on one of our webinars or one of our Zoom meetings, welcome on behalf of all the members at TechSoup and our 100 partners who partner with us to make sure that we bridge the gap between digital solutions and services for good. Thank you so much again for being here. Just wanna let you know how you can participate today. I know when you came in, everybody was on mute. So if you can remain on mute, and if you have a question at the end of the presentation, or Susan may um, guide you differently, she may answer questions while she's presenting. But if you have a question, please use the reaction button right there on the side of your screen. Use the raise your hand button, and then we'll unmute you because we don't want everybody talking over each other. There's so much good stuff here today. So I'm gonna move out the way. This is being recorded. Keep that in mind, this is being recorded and this will be available to you within 48 hours for everybody who's registered. We'll email this to you. And right now you can share the link on your social media. If, you, if you're quick with it, some people are quick at copy and pasting and sharing this with a friend. If you know another nonprofit who needs to be here today, they still have time. So I'm going to introduce our speaker, speaker, our featured speaker today. Her name is Susan Comfort, and what a name! Because we need some comfort today. I love it. She's the co-founder of Nonprofit Wellness, and she's going to lead and guide us today in our discussion. Susan, we've had so many conversations, and so I'm so excited to hear what you have to say and share with our nonprofit. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Welcome. Oh, thank you. You know, we make a lot of tree metaphors, and so maybe it's appropriate that they're grinding up a tree across the street. They just came off like lunch break or something, so I hope you can hear me okay. Thumbs up if you're on camera and you can hear me okay. I'll use my outside recess voice. I, um, uh, you know, have a theatrical background, so I'll try to project as much as possible. Um, so thanks everybody for being here. I actually have a little share thing as well. I want you all to share with us what is going well as appreciative inquiry. What is going well with your immune boosting? And so I'm going to share my screen and the caveat is you can download all of these things here. I'll put it in the chat box. You can download all of these things I'm going to share with you at nonprofitwellness.org slash resources you have to put in your email and you can down get the download link from there and all this stuff is free and most of it's bilingual available so that's my caveat but what i want you to share is what is going well with your immune boosting practice these days so we have given you a list of 12 here on the screen and hopefully something on this list of 12 is going well for you so appreciative inquiry helps us fo focus on the positive this is a great icebreaker in a group because you're always thinking about what's going well. And in habit change and the neuroscience of habit change, it's always easier to keep going with something that's already started than to start something new, right? So in the chat, go ahead and put what is going well for you with immune boosting. So we already have some positivity. You can say it in English. Oh, si español, uh, si español es tu idioma preferido. Um, yeah, you can put the number in. You know, for some of you, sleep is going well, which is amazing. Taking breaks. Uh, yeah, some specifics. And if you know people in the chat who are doing something well that you want to do better, like I'm always trying to eat more mushrooms. So whenever somebody says mushrooms, I'm like, oh, I got to follow up because I've been a vegetarian 30 years and I still haven't figured out how to like mushrooms. So I just like pop the pill, mushroom powder pills. And anyway, so notice like who's saying what. And then especially with your team, you could be like, oh, I need to uh, get outside with so and so because they like hiking, too. Or I need to ask so and so about that Zumba class they mentioned. Um, cool. So getting some numbers up here. I'm particularly, just the, so you know, we came up with this list with our Masters of Public Health students at G George Washington University. They helped us cut the list down from 15 to 12 because we had uh, Ayurveda and herbal teas and some other things on the longer list that you know are proven to boost immunity, but not so much science on those. And so these are all science-based 
and there's a ton of research out there which we have a bunch of and we have a whole YouTube channel with different videos from our MPH interns that talk three minutes each the science behind each of these so if you're curious you can check out our YouTube channel what I'm gonna do today just so you know as long as you can hear me with this tree grinding going on which by the way is hard for my heart because I love trees I've already stolen not stolen like taken with their permission a bunch of the wood from the cut this morning because I have this whole obstacle course in front of my house made of giant wood pieces so anyway great I see some um, resolutions happening in the chat like we need more dancing yes always more dancing um, you know someone never knew about mushrooms you can check out that Netflix uh, fantastic fungi film which is amazing I'm on my fourth watching um, so lots of resources out on the interwebs on all of these and uh, what I'm gonna do today is like this just present a bunch of our kind of materials that we think are really critical right now either because we have to boost our immune systems or because yeah some fast some fun I love in the chat um, or because we have to go back to work and face office environments or schools where we're doing a lot of teacher wellness or just because uh, flu season's coming up and we have a twindemic um, and a lot of stress. This stress has come on us like a tidal wave 19, 20 months ago and never let up. So we need new strategies, not just with our own self-care, which I'm going to argue is kind of tough for our industry uh, but also for team care which is kind of our rallying cry you can see in my shirt we, we say the we in wellness because like you've got to put the we and the team care into wellness in nonprofits and schools and world-changing environments because self-care wasn't enough it was never enough it's definitely not going to be enough now and for some of us self-care is just structurally kind of impossible so for those of you who don't know me hi Hopefully you can hear me okay. Uh, I'm Susan Comfort. It's my real name. It's always been my name through marriage and divorce. Um, I have spent the last 30 years doing nonprofit stuff, sometimes campaigns and sometimes AmeriCorps and sometimes school-based stuff, but nonprofit stuff. And I've been an executive director like many of you uh, two different times in my 20s and again in my 40s. I I never uh, really I had like that. a nonprofit, I mean a wellness oh, curriculum like at work. Um, if you can put yourself on mute, that'd be great. But I always kind of wanted one or like made one up on the fly and like t tried to teach people some yoga poses and tried to like evangelize about vegetarianism. And you know, it, it goes over in mixed ways, uh, right, at work. Um, so when I started consulting again, I really wanted to do capacity building and I decided, hey, wellness is really what we kind of need more of. And this was back in 2018. So I founded nonprofitcomfort.com and uh, then with Taisha Powell, my partner, we co-founded Nonprofit Wellness just recently as a nonprofit. It had been just kind of a little LLC. So now we're a nonprofit and uh, we exist to serve other nonprofits and schools in this elusive team care uh, approach. So happy to answer a question. What I thought I'd do is just kind of whiz through a bunch of things that I will just give you a taste test of and then I'll stop sharing my screen and we can talk and I'll answer questions and refer you to you know whatever references you might need so I was only gonna share like I don't know maybe like 15 minutes Aretha is that good for you thumbs up awesome so you know the stress cycles for all of us and these are like real tree metaphors because we equal trees is like burnout and then recharging and nature does that anyway seasons do that anyway and we as like nonprofit workers, campaign workers, teachers, like have our own like seasons, right? Of burnout and recharge. And some of us do better with it than others. And in our trainings, we have this core curriculum where we equate people to trees and we have all these scientific reasons why, but that means that our roots are really the self-care and the team care that our tree needs in order to get the nourishment. And so the team care, some of you know, you know about the, the trees that have interconnected roots right off to the sides. That's how they stay stable. Uh, that's how the live oak trees in New Orleans stayed live even through or, or didn't die even through uh, the hurricanes. But we have to have our tap roots. We have to have our self-care. We can only be in charge of our own selves like roots too to really dig deep and get that water that we need. And then we have this whole metaphor about the branches of resilience because the storms right of life can be seen as like stress but it's also like making us stronger. Literally storms like strengthen the cellulose in trees and make them stronger and uh, deepen their roots, right? 
And so same thing with stress and, and all of the things in our life that bring us joy and bring us pain. So we have this whole tree metaphor. And I often make the case that like self-care isn't enough, right? It's definitely not enough in a pandemic, stressed out, chronic work, stress society. It's not enough in a toxic work environment. And for those of you who know Gretchen Rubin, the four tendencies, I don't know if anyone knows this or if you so put your tendency in the chat box if you don't mind sharing. I'm an obliger. I've got this book in English and Spanish. And uh, yeah, Susan, hey, another Susan who's an obliger. My suspicion is there's a lot of obligers in the nonprofit field and the teaching field. A lot of questioners too. But that makes us, without going into the whole Gretchen Rubin thing, that makes us fundamentally incapable of self-care. That's like a self-goal, self-expectation that we can't do without accountability or without like paying or whatever. Oh, and somebody's in the happiness project this year with Gretchen, yeah. Um, so I really got a lot out of this book, I recommend it. But that's another reason why self-care just doesn't really work. And so again, our argument is around team care. We've gotta create cultures of care, cultures of well-being. And many of you know Brene Brown. Yay, Brene, yay, Brene. She talks about courage and vulnerability really being the flip sides of the same coin, right? But either way, when leaders are courageous enough to be vulnerable, and guess what? Well, wellness makes us all vulnerable, y'all. Uh, when we talk about our mental health, especially, or our physical health, our bodies, what's going on with our colon or our stomach or our sick, you know, like, what's going on with our physical, we're always talking about our temperature now, like we have so much intimate information about each other. And that creates automatic vulnerability, which then creates empathy, which creates trust. So wellness, my argument, wellness is a shortcut to trust. If you, you know, handle it appropriately, right? You gotta keep people safe. We have to create the conditions, right? For change, for culture shifting and uh, you as executive directors, this is more of an ED chat. We as executive directors are sometimes a little heavy handed about the culture shifting. Like we're all gonna practice yoga. I've been guilty of that. Uh, we're all gonna do this, you know, thing. But really the beauty is like letting your teams find each other, letting your groups find each other. And how do you do that? You cultivate conversation. So this is my little color wheel of that team health concept is that red and blue makes purple. If we talk about our physical health, if we talk about our mental health, it automatically creates that vulnerability, empathy, trust cycle. And that's gonna mean better team health. That's gonna mean you know, better management and communication and understanding and giving each other benefit of the doubt and trusting and team building and teleworking and PD, you know, all the stuff. We'll talk a little more about equity and inclusion later. We have a tool that we've devel developed to bring wellness into those conversations or to bring equity into the wellness conversation, both. So again, this is like blasting through a bunch of stuff. This is a super great tool. Uh, we have it in Spanish and English, of course, and basically the way we use it with teams is you hand it out and say, pick one. You know, you're, let your team like pick one thing that's going well for them and one thing they wanna change increase or decrease because it's an overwhelming list but a lot of these things are already happening in your life you just have to label it wellness and give justification for putting time to it right this isn't the whole list um, but the idea is that how often or by when like are you gonna set an actual achievable small goal to do by the end of the day by the end of the week by the end of your next performance review cycle how, how you know dramatic are you getting in aligning this with your PD or professional development? So that's a, that's a kind of basic, this is like a self-care tool, but it turns into, you see the roots, it turns into a team care conversation when you say like, hey, Aretha, what are you doing? And go ahead, Aretha, you're on the, you know, and, and put in the chat, what, what would you all like to improve? We already did appreciative inquiry. What would you like to do more of? I know some of you would like to do more exercise. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we worded some of these carefully, like planning vacations. You don't have to just take it, just plan it. Then you anticipate it, right? I mean, you, do, you should take it also. Uh, intoxicants, right? That could be alcohol, it could be pot, it could be other intoxicants. But are you increasing? Are you decreasing? You know, so, but this is the conversation about what do we want to change? And then it turns into a, okay, habit change conversation. How do we change habits? How do we support each other in changing habits? 
you know, you can't really support each other in like sleep because that's a little creepy, but you could support each other in like reading more books or reducing screen time, right? You could have some sort of challenge or group thing about that. Um, you could do more nature breaks together. You could do, like Sarah said, more arts and crafts together. Like these are team things that you can do, not just self-care. And you know, sometimes people need to increase their screen time if it's like increasing comedy that makes them laugh, right? Or if it's increasing connections with their loved ones who they can only, you know, FaceTime with, like my kids' grandparents, right? Like maybe screen time is a good thing. Maybe you need to increase it. So don't always go to the negative or the positive, right? Sometimes family isn't something to increase. Sometimes you need to get rid of some of your toxic family members. <laughs> Anyway, so that's a resource that you can use for yourself and for your team. Another, we are not going to get into discussing this today, although I'm happy to answer questions, because it, but it's a deep conversation depending on how, how deep you want to take it. So this is the Stressor and Resilience Scorecard. Quick story, it used to be the Stressor Scorecard and we only focused on the negative. Um, but, and we also have, you know, worded our identity and circumstances in very, many different ways over the last few years. This is the latest version. And we love it because in addition to thinking about the challenge that comes with your different identity and circumstance stressors, you can also think about the growth and the joy that happens, just like those trees that strengthen from storms, right? Your stressor, like I got divorced 10 years ago, that was super duper stressful at the time, but did I grow and achieve joy from that? Absolutely. I'm part of the LGBTQ community. Is that a stressor? Well, frankly, not really, because I'm a white woman, and so it doesn't, like, it's not a big stressor in our life. I can hide my LGBT, my bisexuality, right? But is it an area of growth and joy for me to be part of the gay community? Absolutely. Like, that's a net positive. All right, so where do you have your, like, growth and joy opportunities in addition to stress? And that can be a self-conversation, like where you just reflect to yourself, or if you're ready, if your team is ready, you can start having that conversation with your team. Like, like, what is one thing that you marked on this list that you would feel comfortable sharing with the group? Or, you know, what are, uh, what are some of the ways we can approach stressors in our life with more of a growth mentality or a positive, you know, reframing Daniel Goleman, Martin Seligman kind of positive framework. So this is all neuroscience stuff that we love that um, you can go as deep as you want, right, with your teams. Or it can just be a self-reflection tool. Thank you, Aretha. Deep. Yes, it is. It can be. And these are really deep things. Like, it can awaken trauma. This is actually based, as it says on the bottom, uh, it's based on the ACE scorecard, the Adverse Childhood Experiences scorecard, which is a very graphic trigger, trigger warning, very graphic representation of trauma that uh, individuals experience before the age of 18. These are not as graphic. And you will see what I mean if you look at the ACE scorecard. That's also available on our website. And we did not create it. That's a Kaiser and CDC production. But there's also a resilience scorecard, which actually inspired us to add this other side. So anyway, happy to take questions. Real quick, let's do an exercise together. So this is called box breathing, 120. We're, I still have a few minutes. And uh, you, we'll just all do it together. You don't have to have your camera on, but I'm gonna count for you. And it's basically just equalizing your inhale the pause at the top of the inhale, the exhale, and then the pause at the bottom of the exhale. Because we don't go, <laughs> you know, in and out. There's a pause. So just count, I'm gonna count to four. As we breathe, we inhale, we hold, we exhale, and we hold. So everybody just take a deep breath in and let it out. <sighs> and then we'll breathe in together. Deep breaths in, ready, go. One, two, three, four, and hold, two, now exhale and pause we'll do it again and inhale and pause and exhale and pause one more round and breathe deeply one two three four hold two three and exhale and pause. So returning to your normal breathing or taking a deep breath. That short exercise is called box breathing because it's just equalizing 
That's, oh, sorry, I just sent that to only one person. Uh, just that four, 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 four count. And that means that we're focusing on the breath, right? It's a trick to focus our minds. Give the, give the mind something to do, that monkey mind. Exactly, Jennifer, because it, it sends a message to our nervous system to enter into the parasympathetic state, the ventral vagal parasympathetic, to be specific, because that is what relaxes us. The nervous system does not speak English or Spanish or Russian, it speaks breath. And so when we equalize our breath, we're actually sending a message to our nervous system that like, we're cool, you can calm down. And uh, extra points in the chat, if you know why there's a um, the graphic that's showing on the screen in the middle of the box. And then uh, exercise is also hackable. So I don't know if this is contagious. Oh, oh, I always watch the chat, see if I can make anybody yawn. Uh, although if you do yawn, it means apparently you're not a serial killer, you're not a psychopath. Anyway, so if you've yawned, good job. Um, that's an inhale, that's a lengthened inhalation. So your body, when it needs energy, it naturally lengthens its inhalation in the form of a yawn, bostazo in Espanol. And that's a lengthened inhale and then a quick exhale. And so the opposite is true for relaxation. So for example, you might do, I put it in the chat, um, four, four, 10, five, five, 10, where you inhale deeply for four counts, you hold it for seven counts or four again, and then you lengthen the exhalation. So lengthening the exhalation is a message to your nervous system. Hey, nervous system, you can enter the ventral vagal parasympathetic state right now, go ahead. All is well, you are safe and social, you are tend and befriend, you are rest and digest. So no guesses yet in the chat as to why we have a parachute on this graphic, on this slide. Brene Brown says that, um, great, great guess, Jane. Brene Brown says this is called tactical breathing in the military, that the military has adopted it. So you know it must be good, right? Yes, these are things, both things are true. Jane, it's a lifesaver, right? Because getting into our safe and social or nervous system is correlated with um, fewer health problems and therefore longer lives. It does slow you down, Leah. That's exactly right, literally. And it's that safe and social place. Like it sends a message, a parachute is the parasympathetic nervous system. That's how you can remember the, the uh, mnemonic between sympathetic nervous system, which is actually fight or flight, and the parasympathetic nervous system, which is, fun fact, both safe and social and freeze. Freeze is the dorsal vagal parasympathetic nervous system. It's not lumped in with fight or flight, actually, as most people say. So if you're interested in the vagus nerve, check out Dr. Stephen Porges. Um, he kind of invented the para, I mean, polyvagal theory. Porges, I think I spelled that right in the chat. Anyway, a couple other things. So keep breathing. Um, a couple other things that you can do with your team. Uh, Lars, yeah, it's a good mnemonic. Um, is habit change like talk about habit change and how you can support each other in habit change so these are things that we go over in our habit change training around uh, some atomic habits stuff by james clear you could read that book and discuss it look at a handout of that book do the blankest thing for five minutes of that book stacking bundling these are all habit change sort of tricks making really small goals and recruiting culture that team care right so you'll need to form new habits to have new wellness tools in your tool chest. Um, and then uh, I think just four more slides. These are examples. Uh, these exact slides aren't downloadable, but the materials are. So you can get your ideas from these. We do this with clients. Like we'll give them our bingo cards and then work with them to have prizes and they can have like post-it note. These are the Spanish versions. Um, there are English versions on the site too. People can put their initials on a little post-it note to say what they did. And when they get bingo, they get a gold star or a prize or a chia seed sample or whatever you can give, give out as prizes. Um, you know, you, you know, bingo, like you all are uh, almost 50 like me. So, you know, like postage stamp and lines and, you know, four corners, you can do different bingo patterns, uh, et cetera. Balance birds, these are great. These only cost a dollar. And you put them on your, I don't, I put them in my bag for yoga class, so I don't even have any here, but you put them on your finger and it's mesmerizing. You can just balance it on your finger. Kids do it. And um, 
you know, you can spin it. It's, it's a reminder to breathe. Balancing birds are great. They make great little prizes. Um, I'm a very novice juggler, but I learned through juggling scarves. And so uh, we work with, um, we, well, one of our clients is StoryCorps, and we worked with Kevin O'Keefe of Circus Minimus, who taught me to juggle, to do teach them juggling. Oh, this is a different thing. To teach them juggling. There's Kevin. And use it as a team building tool, right? Because you can do partner juggling things. Uh, to use it as a self-talk tool, right? What are you telling yourself about learning this new skill? That you're terrible at it? or that it's challenging and we should take on new brain neuro challenges, right? Cause it's a midline crossing activity, which is really important as we age neuroplasticity. So, and Kevin's a yoga teacher as am I. And so he's always telling us to breathe and drink water and you know, all the good stuff. So I highly recommend juggling as a brain break, as a team building tool, that kind of thing. Uh, we've even done it online with like plastic bags, <laughs> workshops. Um, and earthalopes holiday time coming up this is a great thing to do with your team we have a little two minute video on our youtube channel with um our gen z trainer this is davis priest who's a, a art major at um, university of vermont and i've been making earthalopes for 30 years i'll just give you a little sneak preview Welcome to Fun Friday. She showed me how to make it and it changed my life. So thank you, Susan. <laughs> Started making earth lobes out of that because nobody uses atlases anymore to work with today. Here are the steps that we're gonna um, go through. We're gonna... The earth lobes are, don't require pretty much, they are very minimal um, supplies. The first one would be scissors and the second would be like tape or glue or some kind of binding like sticky agent. I'm gonna make three sections sides. You're just gonna cut right up that line. Once you glue it, this is. So there's a little sneak preview of our little summary video. Um, and you can make your own earth lobes, make your own holiday cards, make your own gratitude cards. The season of gratitude, November is coming up. Um, being grateful, showing gratitude is also brain science backed in terms of boosting our immunity and treat you know training our brains to be positive because when we're oops, when we're grateful for stuff we look at the world more positively we look for things to be grateful for so uh this is ways to keep in touch with me ways to follow us i'm kind of mad at instagram right now so we're not uh we'll probably keep posting there but i'm quitting facebook soon just as soon as i stop or, or we complete our first fundraising campaign for nonprofit wellness around me turning 50. <laughs> so if you give $50, we'll send you a whole set of our postcards and earth loaves uh, as well. But um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. I think that's it. Uh, and then we can open it up for questions and, um, and, and resources. You know, folks are already sharing some resources in the chat. And, you know, basically my theme is not just self-care, but like, what can we do as a team? Like, what can you as leaders foster with your team that does speak to their wellness either mentally or physically or teamally and you know what are what are successful ways that you've done that right because i don't have all the ideas we have some good tools that we've tested with different groups over the years but you know i'm happy to take questions about anything i've presented but i really love it when you know you all in the chat box and with your examples can just share with each other what's worked for you or even some fantastic failures that you can feel forward and help others realize that like you tried it this way and it didn't work right um so you know with team care with wellness mental physical health pretty much anything fits in these categories so it's sort of hard to open it up to such a broad topic um, but why don't we start with, uh, you know, things that have gone well for you, appreciative inquiry, like in a team care way, whether it's online in this COVID environment um, or, you know, in some other creative low budget way that you found to support your team in their wellness. And you can put it in the chat or we can make this a conversation and you can come off mute and share briefly. And if you come off mute, please use the raise your hand button, please, so that everybody doesn't come off mute at the same time. I see Allison put um, self-care stipends. I love that. And Sarah put staff retreats. 
Um, before we get into the, the comments and the questions, Susan, look, if I had that, if I had that, you know, that, that little sound thing, yes, I would just play it so loud and clap. Thank you so much. I saw some, some snaps for you. This was amazing. I was, I was trying to, you know, take notes, but I couldn't, you know, so I'll go back and watch this. So this is great. Thank you so much. So I'm going to go back. If you have a question or a comment, if you just like to come on live and just say thank you to Susan. I'm seeing a lot of the comments. Use the raise your hand option is right where the reaction button is. And we'll acknowledge you. And yeah, and I just want to acknowledge, thank you, um, Aretha, and thanks for the snaps. And and Michelle put an amazing practice and, and, and just want to underscore, it doesn't have to be the leader. In fact, it's better sometimes if it's not the sort of titular leader of the organization. If whoever, right, that is is already doing these kinds of things can lead, you know, taking three deep breaths together. That doesn't take any training. You don't have to be a yoga teacher, uh, right? You, you don't even have to be a yoga teacher to lead yoga poses. I wasn't for a long time. Um, and asking folks to leave something at the door, that takes no wellness training at all, right? you know? So that's just a great reminder and almost like a life philosophy that your employees are gonna take with them. And so, you know, you'll, there's a lot of great suggestions in the chat, keep them coming. Yeah, let's read them aloud for those who will be watching on the replay because they can't see the chat going. So Susan, if you wanna do that. Sure. <clears throat> Um, I'll just underscore, you know, uh, ER said something about silliness, you know, taking time to just chat about what makes us laugh. I love this. It's we, we have laughter, LOL, right, as the number one immune booster because it creates endorphins, it boosts serotonin, it boosts, it uh, strengthens your core. We actually have this connection effect with others when we laugh with them. And so don't ever tamp down laughter, you know, in your office, like do whatever you can to get a chuckle out of people. Um, I see Jane um, with her hand raised. Jane, you can unmute yourself. Thanks, Aretha and Susan and everyone. Very nice to see you. Um, just a little, I mean, obviously my, I'm, you can see I'm in my home today. So I am working a hybrid schedule and my team, we've had, well, probably a little more than half of our team who've had to be on site all through the pandemic. And then those of us who obviously have the ability to do our jobs remotely. And so I think as a leader, that has been one of my greatest challenges is how to, how to keep the team cohesive. Um, but we've always had a weekly staff huddle that um, the chairs rotate. So every week someone is responsible for leading the staff huddle. And something that I learned and um, asked the team if they wanted to do during the pandemic is whoever's hosting can add a fun question at the end that we all, you know, after we've done all the business. And it's everything from if you had a month uh, that you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go and why? Um, because it's Halloween, I've just noticed that tomorrow's question is going to be, what is your greatest fear in life and why? What is it? <laughs> uh, and I, I, all I'm just going to say is that has just been, that one little question at the end of the meeting every week is just, I think, nice. keeping it real with all of us. But I've taken away so many great things here today too. Oh, good. Jane, I see that in the chat. Like Eric said, starting meetings with a one word check in on how you're feeling. Uh, Mark said, we've started doing a one good thing minute. Um, remember that show at the beginning of the pandemic? Yep. Uh, and Jane, you know, saying, yay, if we get through the agenda, we have time to do our fun question. That's an, that's an incentive to get through the agenda to, um, and then my only addition, Jane, is make those questions wellness oriented. We even have a check-in questions, I believe so strongly in them, uh, download on the page where we have some wellness oriented ones. If you need ideas, we have some virtual only ones where people can use their computer to type, you know, put an emoji in the chat or do some video sharing or whatever. And, uh, you know, so if you need ideas and because you can really, like Jane said, like team build and find out so much about each other and people let down their guard and they say something personal and something funny and you find yeah. unexpected connections. 
So yeah, Netflix recommendations, your laughter lists of things that make you laugh. Dr. Fisher says they have a mindfulness deck they can, you know, folks draw from in the office throughout the day. One of our school principals, I gave a puzzle to, she put it in her office so people can come in, work on the puzzle for a few minutes in silence and leave or do it while they're meeting. Um, that's a jigsaw puzzle that is. Yeah, there's some great stuff in the chat, check it out. Um, Yes, for those on the recording, rating yourself on uh, at the beginning of the day on a one to five scale, one being not the best, five being great. Uh, for those of you don't know, that's a great fist to five self rating. Like for those of us on camera right now, let's do that self rating. Like she said, when she worked for NAMI, we would start with rating ourselves on a one to five for that day, one being not the best, or let's say in this case, fist is zero, not the best, like terrible. And then five is like fantastic you're doing great today so if those of you who are on camera come on camera if you want let's just do a quick fist to five on three you're going to rate yourself on a scale of zero to five one two three so looking around the room we don't have to comment on who's what but you can just see where people are cool thanks for sharing and some in the chat right so you can share it in the chat same thing we have numbers of scales we have numbers of immune boosters we have you know like what you know those great memes like which keanu reeves face are you today or which dog are you today or which prince you know are you today and and you pick one through nine those can be good emotional icebreakers as well wow i love that one that we're all using zoom so that's something i think we can all do all the time before you start a meeting, you know, do a check-in because seeing the hands that had threes in my mind, I'm wondering what they're going through because Saturday I wasn't doing so good because that was the anniversary of my mom's death. But today I'm doing really good. So I think that is a powerful one to use to check in mic drop right there. Thank you, Susan. Oh, sure. Now, these are just little facilitation tips I've picked up along the way. Again, 30 years in nonprofits. I've been to a lot of retreats, y'all, um, but in conferences. I put in the chat, maybe, Aretha, you can find it, um, that blog from the TechSoup blog in June. I think it was June 2nd, and there were a bunch of tips on virtual meetings that um, Na wrote up based on our conversation. So that'll be a good resource for folks as well. Yeah, I'll find it. Great. Well, I, Susan, this has been fantastic. I'll put the blog in the, um, the email that's gonna go out to everybody. Remember, this has been recorded. I'm gonna send the email out to everybody with a replay and um, the link to the blog as well. There's a survey that's gonna pop up on your screen once you close it. And please fill it out. Let us know um, what you thought of this. If you'd like to see more, I would like to see more because this has been fantastic. Anybody have any comments? I'm gonna let Susan have the closing remarks. Yeah, I just I put our link in the chat for the trainings that we do some of them I referenced today there, you know, sometimes we hire other people to do skill shops like juggling and sometimes or Davis to do earth -elopes. and sometimes we lead them ourselves because it's a curriculum we've developed but um, I'm always happy to share with EDs. I love EDs. Y'all are doing the thankless, tireless island of work. I get it where you're like responsible for fundraising. You have to deal with the board. Nobody understands what you do. You can't really make total friends with your staff, but you have to be connected with them because they need to feel connected with you. I mean, it's just like the impossible job that EDs have to do. And even my second ED job when I was just like the, the local outpost of the national organization and I didn't have to do all the back end like you know, legal and, and admin stuff, it was still really hard. So I totally get how difficult it is for you all to do your jobs, to make time for self care, etc. And now it's like, okay, and you're also in charge of team care, because you have to tell everyone how to be well, not exactly, we just want you to be able to start the conversations in your workplace, because everybody else taking the lead on this is exactly what you want. Don't be the leader on, on wellness in your office, right? Just like create the, the conversation, the ecosystem for somebody else to emerge as the leader because you are the leader for plenty. And even if you're like me and you're like vegetarian yoga, like don't be the proselytizer that I was because it's much better if it comes from somebody in the group. <laughs> so those are my final words, but uh, just to know that like, I hear you, I, I support you, I'm happy to like, you know, give we give away all of our stuff for free anyway, but I'm, we're happy to work with you on retreats and trainings and stuff like that. 
um, as well as listen for, to your feedback on what we what would work better for you, you know, what you need. So thanks so much for showing up today. Yeah, thank you so much. Somebody put in the chat room, they wanted me to email them. I will not remember to email you because it's so many of you. So please email me. If somebody shared this link and you did not register, that means you won't get the recording. Email me at asimons at techsoup.org, asimons at techsoup.org, and I will email it directly to you. Thank you so much. I always end the webinars or meetings with you're taking care of everybody else. Make sure you take time to take care of yourself. Have a great day, everybody.